ready to dive into some seriously mind-blowing predictions. Always up for a good mind-bending. Today we're talking Ray Kurzweil, the AI pioneer and futurist. Oh yeah, Kurzweil. <laughs> He's always got some interesting things to say. We're specifically looking at his recent interview from SXSW 2024. He made some really bold claims about the future, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. Yeah, he's not one to shy away from bold predictions, that's for sure. But the thing is, he's been surprisingly accurate in the past. Exactly. So that's why even if some of his ideas might seem a little out there, we're going to dive deep and see what he's got to say. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. So we're going to unpack some of his biggest ideas. Things like the singularity, which is, I mean, come on, the singularity, that's just wild. Yeah, it's definitely a big one. And then the possibility of humans living for hundreds of years, you know, longevity stuff, which is crazy to think about. It's definitely pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible. So one of Kurzweil's core ideas, right off the bat, the exponential progress curve. Ah, yes, the exponential progress curve. This isn't just some abstract theory, right? This is something that he's actually charted, I mean, an 80-year chart to track the growth of computing power. He's got the data to back it up, yeah. And the results are, well, they're pretty wild. I mean, he's saying that computing power has increased, get this, 20 quadrillion fold in 80 years. That's almost impossible to even wrap your head around, 20 quadrillion fold. I mean, it's mind boggling. But the thing is, and this is what I find so fascinating, he's not just talking about like, our iPhones getting faster every year. Right, it's much bigger than that. He's talking about a fundamental principle of technological advancement. This is the thing that's driving it all. It's about the underlying trend. And that principle is exponential growth. And basically what that means is that like the same amount of progress is made in each unit of time, which means that on the latter half of that curve, things get really, really crazy. It starts to accelerate rapidly. So think about it this way. It's like going from, I don't know, a horse-drawn carriage to a spaceship in less than a century. That's how fast things are changing. That's a pretty good analogy. But here's the thing that I think is really important for our listeners to understand. This same principle, this exponential growth, it's not just about computers. Right, it applies to much more. This is happening across all fields of technology. Yeah, it's driving progress everywhere. So we're talking medicine, energy, transportation, you name it. All these areas are on the verge of these massive breakthroughs that Honestly, we probably can't even imagine right now. It's pretty exciting to think about, even though it can be a little overwhelming. Yeah, it is. It's both, right? It's exciting and it's kind of scary. So where does this exponential growth lead us? Well, according to Kurzweil, it leads us to AGI. AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. Yeah. And he thinks it's going to be here by as early as 2029. Wow, 2029. That's like, what, five years away? That's right around the corner. It is. Now, AGI, this isn't just about like machines doing specific tasks better than humans, like playing chess or, you know, composing music. It's not just narrow AI, right? It's about machines that can think and learn and solve problems across a wide range of domains, essentially like matching or even surpassing human intelligence. It's about machines that can truly think for themselves. That's wild. It is wild. And it makes you wonder, what does that even look like? I mean, we're already seeing AI doing some amazing things. Mm -hmm. We've got AI creating art, writing poetry, composing music even. Right, and it's getting better all the time too. Exactly, so you can only imagine what it will be like when we have AGI. And Kurzweil, he bases his prediction on the rapid development of these large language models, or LLMs. Oh yeah, LLMs, these things are really taking off. Yeah, I mean, these are the systems that are behind those chatbots and AI assistants that we're all using more and more. And they're already doing some pretty incredible things. Yeah, and he believes that once these LLMs reach a trillion connections, which is about the same as the human brain, they're gonna hit this tipping point. If it's like a critical mass. And that's when AGI will emerge. It's a bold prediction, but I can see where he's coming from. Yeah, and I know I know some people are gonna hear this and think, okay, robots are gonna take over the world, but Kurzweil, he's actually pretty optimistic about AGI. He's not a doomsayer, that's for sure. He believes that AGI has the potential to solve some of our biggest problems, like climate change, poverty, you know, really make a positive impact on the world. It's about using this powerful technology for good. Exactly, and one interesting thing he points out is that you know that Turing test, that classic benchmark of AI, where a machine tries to fool a human into thinking it's another human? Oh yeah, the Turing test. He says it's actually becoming less and less relevant. Really? 
less relevant. How so? Well, I mean, if you think about it, passing the Turing test, it often requires dumbing down the AI to kind of mimic those human quirks and limitations. Ah, I see. But AGI, it's about going beyond those limitations. It's about exceeding them. It's about focusing on the true potential of AI. And not just its ability to imitate us. That's a really good point. But even Kurzweil admits there are still some things that AI struggles with. Oh, there's definitely still challenges. Simulating complex systems like the human body, that's still a big hurdle. But even there, he's got some pretty incredible examples of AI innovation. Like, did you know that AI was used to design the Moderna vaccine? No way, really? Yeah, they simulated billions of possibilities in a single weekend. That's insane. So AI is already playing a crucial role in scientific discovery. It is. And that's just the beginning. So it's not about replacing human ingenuity. It's about using AI to amplify it. It's a tool, a powerful tool. Exactly. And speaking of powerful tools, Kurzweil, he believes that brain-computer interfaces are going to be crucial for us to keep up with the rapid development of AI. Brain-computer interfaces, that's another one of those futuristic technologies that always gets people talking. I know, yeah. and they're already being developed. They are. It's mind-blowing. It is. I mean, imagine a world where you can access information instantly. Just like that, boom. Learn any skill effortlessly. Just download it. And even communicate with other people through thought alone. Wow, that's some serious sci-fi stuff. <laughs> I know. But it's not just sci-fi anymore. Nope. These technologies are coming, and they raise some pretty big questions about what it means to be human. Like, when the line between our minds and machines starts to blur, where does that leave us? It's a question we're going to have to grapple with sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's something to think about. Yeah. And all of this, it leads us to Kurzweil's most mind-bending prediction of all. The singularity. The singularity. That moment in time when AI surpasses human intelligence so dramatically that we can't even comprehend what happens next. Yeah, it's almost impossible to even imagine. It's like asking a goldfish to understand the complexities of human society. It just doesn't compute, right? Thanks. So Kurzweil sees the singularity as this ongoing process of accelerating change, driven by this exponential growth in computing power. Right. And he thinks we're going to hit it around 2045. 2045. That may seem far off, but in the grand scheme of things, especially with technology, that's right around the corner. It is. So what happens after the singularity? What does a world look like where AI is vastly more intelligent than humans? That's the big question, isn't it? And that's what we'll be exploring in part two of this deep dive. Welcome back. You know, last time we were talking about the singularity. Yeah, that point where AI just like surpasses human intelligence so much that we just can't even fathom what happens next. Right, and like we were saying, it's this concept that it really stretches our imagination. Yeah, it's like trying to explain the internet to somebody who was living in the 1800s. Yeah, they wouldn't even have the framework to understand. Right, they just they just couldn't even grasp it, and that's that's kind of where we are with the singularity. It really is. It's like it's not just about AI getting smarter. You know, it's about intelligence itself evolving in ways that we can't even conceive of yet. Yeah, and Kurzweil believes that this evolution is going to be driven by, you know, that continued exponential growth of computing power. Right. Which is going to lead to AI systems that are not only more intelligent than us, but also capable of, like, self-improvement. Yeah. At an accelerating rate. So it's like this feedback loop mm -hmm. that could lead to just this explosion of intelligence far beyond anything we've ever seen. So the big question I think for a lot of people is what does this mean for us, you know, for humanity? Are we just gonna be left in the dust by these super intelligent machines? Well, Kurzweil is actually quite optimistic about the potential for humans and AI to kind of work together. Okay. He thinks that brain-computer interfaces are gonna be crucial in this partnership. So it's not about being replaced by AI, it's about merging with it. Exactly, and be calling something greater than the sum of our parts. So, like, imagine a world where you can access any information, instantly learn any skill effortlessly, and even communicate with others through thought alone. Yeah, that's the kind of potential that he sees in brain-computer interfaces. And it's not just about enhancing our individual capabilities either. Right. He believes that these technologies could lead to new forms of collective intelligence. So, like, groups of people collaborating and solving problems in ways that we can't even imagine today. That's a pretty powerful vision, but it does raise some concerns, you know? Of course. If we're merging our minds with machines, what does that mean for our individuality or our privacy? You know, even our sense of self. Yeah, those are all valid questions. And they're questions that we need to be addressing now. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be thinking about 
the ethical implications of these technologies and developing safeguards to protect our privacy and you know and our autonomy right and ensuring that the benefits of AI are shared widely and equitably it's like we're building a bridge to this new world and we need to make sure it's a bridge that everyone can cross. So another technology that Kurzweil believes is going to play a major role in the future is nanotechnology. Oh yeah, nanotech. Tiny robots with huge potential. Yeah, these microscopic robots, they have the potential to revolutionize everything from medicine to manufacturing to energy production. I'm not, and think about it, they could repair damage at the cellular level maybe even reverse the aging process. Yeah, he talks about radical life extension living for hundreds of years or even longer. It's pretty wild to think about. It is, it is. So that raises some pretty big questions too. You know, if we could live that long, what would we do with all that time? How would society adapt? Would we even still be motivated to work or achieve things if we knew we had centuries ahead of us? It's true. Yeah. I mean, we challenge our current societal structures. For sure, it would force us to rethink a lot of things like our values and our priorities. Yeah, but it's also a future that has this incredible potential, you know? It does. Imagine the knowledge and the wisdom that we could accumulate over centuries, the experiences we could have, the contributions we could make to the world. Yeah, it's like expanding the canvas of human existence, you yeah. know? Yeah. Where we're not limited by this ticking biological clock anymore. Yeah. But even as we explore all these exciting possibilities, we can't ignore the potential risks and challenges. Yeah, like what if AI gets used for malicious purposes or the ethical questions around digital immortality and creating artificial life? Right, we have to approach all of this with responsibility and foresight. You know, making sure we're using this tech to create a better future for everyone, not just a select few. So it's like we're holding the keys to this really powerful engine and we have to be careful not to crash the car. That's a good analogy. And as we navigate these challenges, we have to remember that we're not just passive observers in this process. Right. We have the power to shape the future, to make choices that determine the course of this technological evolution. So what are those choices and how can we make sure we're making the right ones? I guess that's what we're going to be talking about in the final part of this deep dive. So we've talked about a lot of pretty mind bending stuff in this deep dive, you know. Yeah, we've covered some ground. Exponential growth of technology, AI, the singularity, even living for hundreds of years. It's a lot to take in. It is. And it seems pretty clear that we're living in a time of like unprecedented change and possibility. Yeah, the future is unfolding right before our eyes. And I think the big takeaway for me from all of this is that the future isn't something that just happens to us, you know? Right. It's something that we create. Through the choices we make. Exactly. So what are some of those key choices and how can we make sure we're steering this technological ship, you know, in the right direction? Well, I think one of the most important things is to start having these conversations about the ethical implications of these technologies. Yeah. You know, we can't just leave it to the tech companies or the government yeah. to decide what the future is going to look like. It's going to be a collective effort. Exactly. It's up to all of us. And we need to be thinking about the impact of AI on everything, you know, yeah. from jobs to education to healthcare to social justice. It's like we're at this fork in the road and, you know, one path leads to a future where technology really empowers and uplifts humanity and the other path leads to a future where it just makes things worse you know or it exacerbates existing inequalities exactly and it's up to us to choose the path that leads to a better world for everyone yeah and that means demanding transparency and accountability from the people who are developing these technologies right and advocating for policies that promote ethical and responsible innovation yeah and, you know, educating ourselves about all of this so we can make informed decisions. It's about being informed and engaged citizens. Exactly. But it's not just about, you know, mitigating the risks. Mm -hmm. It's also about embracing the opportunities that come with all this new technology. Oh, yeah. There are some incredible opportunities. I mean, we've been talking about how AI could solve some of our most pressing problems. Climate change, disease, poverty. Right. And don't forget about the potential for personal transformation, too. Like, imagine learning new skills effortlessly connecting with others in these profound new ways and really expanding our creativity. Yeah, it's almost like we're on the verge of a new renaissance. Fueled by the power of AI. But to realize that potential, we need to cultivate this mindset of curiosity and openness. Right. And you know, a willingness to embrace the unknown and adapt to a world that's constantly changing.
And we gotta work together. Collaboration is key. Yeah, across disciplines, across cultures. To harness the power of technology for the greater good. It's a daunting task, but it's also incredibly exciting, you know? It is. We're literally watching the future being written, and we all have a role to play in shaping it. So what can you do to be a part of it? Yeah, what can our listeners do? Start by asking questions. You know, right. Challenge assumptions, talk about the future with your friends and family. Read books and articles. Explore online resources, connect with others who are passionate about this stuff. Yeah, don't be afraid to think big and imagine the impossible. Because as Kurzweil has shown us, the impossible might be just around the corner. And remember, the future isn't preordained, you know. It's a blank slate. It's something that we create together. One choice at a time. So choose wisely, choose boldly, and choose with hope. The future is ours to make. And on that note, dear listener, keep those brains buzzing, keep those conversations flowing, keep those imaginations running wild, because the future is calling and it's time for us to answer. Until next time, keep diving deep.